Maybe like a barely legal girl comes up to you and she's like, her t are wet. It's hot outside. She's sweating. She has underboob sweat dripping down. And she's like, sign my thing, smoking oaken. Damn, that's actually, that's a good one. Uh, and if she doesn't slip me the note, I'll make sure to say, hey, go, get oh, that girl security. backstage. Grab that girl backstage. I'm so open about like, if I want to bang this girl or if I want to hook up with this girl, whatever it is, it's going to happen. In the year of 1994, the Disney Channel would enter a golden age that would span over two decades. From touring the world to their billions of adoring fans to starring in blockbuster Hollywood movies, the Disney Channel back in the 90s and early 2000s really had the power to make or break any child star. Today's subject is actually a little bit different from other Deep Dive Secret Society videos. See, I have spoken extremely extensively on this channel about Disney stars, including Orlando Brown, Kyle Massey, Lindsay Lohan, if you count her. We've even ventured into the world of Hannah Montana over on Deep Dive. But today, I want to look at an entirely different area of Hannah Montana, Mitchell Musso. I'm Mitchell Musso from Hannah Montana, and you're watching Disney Channel. From his start in Life is Rough with Kyle Massey to his massive tour supporting his very own album, Mitchell Musso would ride the Hannah Montana wave of success all the way to the bank. However, trouble would quickly follow, as his rock star tendencies would spill out onto the road, and Mitchell Musso would go from Disney Channel starlet to hard rock and roll criminal. And y'all, Disney would even fire him. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Born into a family of two brothers, all three of the Musso brothers had a major interest in the entertainment industry. Being born in Texas, Mitchell already had a leg up on most of the rest of the country. See, Disney stars from Demi Lovato to Debbie Ryan to Selena Gomez all started in Texas, got cast on Barney, then all three had their own respectable Disney Channel shows that debuted to millions. Mitchell would get cast in The Key Man and a short titled Am I Cursed? Who is this, Richie? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. That's not Jesus, Mama. What'd you say, big guy? That's not what he looks like, Daddy. How do you know this, Richie? I've seen him. I've seen him. Both of these roles were very minor, but gave Mitchell an in into the entertainment industry. He would see what a real Hollywood set was like and how to act around other actors and crew. But the story of Mitchell Musso really begins three years prior to Hannah Montana's debut. In 2003, when Mitchell was cast alongside his future Hannah Montana co-star's brother, Haley Joel Osment, in the movie Secondhand Lions. Now, I had no idea Emily Osment was a Nepo baby like Miley, so that really explains why she was originally up for the role of Alexis Texas, or Hannah Montana, or Chloe, or whatever, at all. And then obviously Miley came in, and the rest was history. Anyway, that's a different story for a different video, actually my already existing Hannah Montana video over on Deep Dive, but Mitchell would debut in the seemingly non-Disney project to little fanfare. So he had a relatively hard-working childhood, but from what I can see, he performed in very age-appropriate roles, which sadly for child stars is actually notable. What was your first, like, acting job that was, like, television, movie, whatever? Your first, like, thing where you're like, oh, sh acting, this is hmm. big. What was the first thing? Like, not commercial-wise, you mean, like, on a movie? Yeah. <laughs> Monster House. Monster House. That was an animated thing, right? It was, but it wasn't. It was motion capture. We were in a 20 by 20 room with 200 motion sensor cameras, 200 reflectors on us, no. wet suits and everything. This is Steven Spielberg. I'm like a baby starring in Steven Spielberg's movie Holy with shit. a list of incredible actors that I didn't really think of at the time. The coolest thing for me was me and Sam Lerner, who played Chowder in, in Monster House, went to go see Napoleon Dynamite <laughs> before we're shooting, come to the set, guess who walks up? John Hedder? Walks up. He's playing Whoa. the pizza man. Huh. We scream. That was the coolest thing in the world for us. We scream. We jump on top of him. And he was like, <laughs> oh my God, what the f I got myself into. First day on set, John breaks his leg. What? Post-production. We have to change schedule. Fit him in. Because you jumped later. on him? <laughs> no, he was running. He was doing the scene and he was... Wait, I'm so, so weird. Ooh, he better drink some more milk. Yeah. Now, what I'm always interested in when I do these videos is who the parents are. Like, for instance, we didn't get into it too much, but Hilary Duff has a helicopter mom who actually was the reason she didn't get cast in the second Lizzie McGuire movie. And Miley has industry parents, and they always say that, like, oh, she's protected because she has, like, industry parents. But you do have to wonder, like, parents who've seen all the dark sides of the industry just willingly bringing their own children into it, like, kind of 
bizarre. I don't know. You can also really tell if a kid wants to do it by if their siblings are involved as well. See, parents in show business often push not just one, but all of their children into the spotlight, whether it be just to vicariously live through them or for monetary gain. Many of these families are supported from their children's jobs alone. Only information I've been able to find on Mitchell Musso's parents is that they highly encouraged his career and were very, very supportive, which makes me think he was probably pushed into auditions at a young age, as it seems like his main passion is music and he started acting when he was still in single digits. And his brother is also a notable figure, so clearly the parents were trying for something, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Anyway, the first major Disney Channel project Mitchell Musso would be officially cast in was the Disney Channel original movie Life is Rough. Coming next month, Kelvin Wheeler just about had it all. Kelvin Trash goes up this morning. He's covered, Dad. Don't forget the lock with this guy. Popularity. Kelvin Wheeler! A best friend who would do anything for him. What's the word, Fig? You've got a pop quiz coming up in fifth period. Mm -hmm. Also, they mailed out third quarter report cards yesterday, so heads up at home. And an amazing collection of the world's greatest comic book. Gotham Man, Proton Comics. The only thing he's missing is... 1947, Gotham Man, edition... $3,000. It's impossible. What do we say about impossible? Expect the impossible! Get him. All he needed was to run into an idea. That little rat of yours attacking me. This rat, he's an award-winning purebred terrier. We've won Top Dog Invitational two years in a row. First prize is $5,000. Could you repeat that? Sound like easy money. We happen to be missing something kind of important. A dog. There is one dog. Are you sure this is the only dog available? Now, for Calvin to get what he watched the premiere of the Disney Channel original movie, Life is Rough, starring Kay Panabaker and That's So Raven's Kyle Massey. And this kid goes, you know, are you Mitchell Moose Nut? <laughs> Moose I was like, Mitchell Musso. <laughs> he's like, oh my God. He's like, oh, dude, I love Life is Rough. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks, man. Psst. Wait, was Life is Rough before? <laughs> Hannah, it was. It was? Yes. Now, the year was 2005. This was a huge year for the Disney Channel. Movies like Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen with Lindsay Lohan had just hit the airwaves. And Tia and Tamara had just made their DCOM debut in Twitches. That's So Raven had blasted off to great heights the year prior and produced a new unexpected star in their own right. Kyle Massey, which is also subsequently last week's topic. Kyle Massey would be cast alongside Mitchell Musso in Life is Rough, a movie about a show dog who chases a boy and they get into all sort of shenanigans. The movie was a smash hit, not only for testing Kyle Massey as a main character for his own spinoff show, but for Mitchell Musso as well, a brand new star to the Disney Channel machine. This movie would change the trajectory of Mitchell Musso's entire life and would effectively put him on the radar of Disney casting agents. The next year in 2006, when Mitchell was only 14 years old, he would audition for the role of Oliver Oaken on the all-new Disney Channel show, Hannah Montana. I keep thinking back to first audition, first audition we ever went in, and Miley had already gotten the part, and I was auditioning with Mitchell, who neither of us had gotten the roles, and we were all thrown into this giant room of people, very scary. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, I guess. This table, can we find something closer to the dumpster? <laughs> not going to believe this. Chloe says she doesn't like Hannah Montana. Oh, time out. I don't even have that. <laughs> Miley and I started out not knowing anything about each other in these past five years. I know every single thing about that girl. Now, the casting process for Hannah Montana wasn't all that linear. It's been somewhat popular knowledge for years now that Gossip Girl's own Taylor Momsen was initially a shoe-in for the role. Allegedly, Daniela Monet from Victorious was also offered the role, as she was being tested with audiences on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Allie and AJ even chimed in on Twitter, saying they were offered the roles as well, way before Miley. But when the Disney Channel found a young Miley Cyrus, they knew they had found a star. Now, Mitchell Musso may have just been a side character on Hannah Montana, but because of Miley Cyrus bringing an actual edge to the Disney Channel and then being able to produce pop star after pop star after that, Mitchell Musso was at the pinnacle of the golden age of the Disney Channel, and the opportunities would just keep flowing. Hannah Montana would blow up to much fanfare, and Miley, Emily, and Mitchell would be showered in opportunity. And y'all, this was not just Mitchell, but apparently his brother as well. 
Miley Cyrus's mother, being the momager that she is, actually got to talking to Mitchell's mother about their sons on the set of Hannah Montana. The topic of music gradually came up, and they talked about how into music their sons were. That's when the parents decided to set up what the LA Times refers to as a, quote, jam date for an 18-year-old Trey Cyrus and a 17-year-old Mason Musso, Mitchell's older brother. My older brother's like best friends with Trace, my mom's best friends with Tish, and I'm, you know, great friends with Miley, so. The two would get together with a much older 26-year-old and form the band Metro Station. Now, they were deep in the warped tour side of the scene and actually achieved commercial success with their hit song, Shake It. Trace would even date deep dive subject Melissa Marie from The Millionaires, the queen of the scene. So needless to say, their stars were definitely on the rise. Hannah Montana was gold. Anything that touched it or even got near it suddenly became a hot topic discussion, and Miley's fans would obsess over it. With Mason and Trace starting their new band, Mitchell would be enticed to exercise his singing abilities as well. But for him, since he was actively on Hannah Montana, it would make sense to be with Disney through their subsidiary Hollywood Records. This means a lot. First, it has to sort of be kid-friendly if it's on Hollywood Records. Like, obviously in later years, like 2011 through 13, Disney would allow Selena Gomez to return to Disney after releasing more grown-up music. And Miley Cyrus said hell and Lolita on her album. But don't call me a Lolita, cause I don't let them through. Cause I'm saving all my loving for someone and it's you. But we're talking about 2007. Hannah Montana had just debuted. High School Musical was filming their second movie, and Disney had just ventured into the world of music. And they were ultra focused on making it as kid friendly as possible, separating it from the main charts, letting parents just let their kids watch Disney and listen to whatever they put out. While I'm sure Mitchell wanted to make music like his brother in Metro Station that was much, much more grown up, he honestly just seemed grateful to be able to write his own music at all. And Disney would supply him with gigantic music videos, or would just start populating his music amongst their albums and movies, like Disney Mania 5, or even, sometimes if he's lucky, Hannah Montana. In 2007, Mitchell Musso did his first song with Disney Channel for the Disney movie Snow Buddies. It was the theme song, and they even had Mitchell film a music video to air on the Disney Channel during commercial breaks to promote the movie. Don't you ever give up on your dreams, no matter how hard things around you seem. You gotta keep your head on what you do today. Keep holding on, cause help is on the way. When out of the blue, your buddies appear, they're like instant friends and their mission is clear. Keep working together to make it all real. It's what you've been hoping all along you'd feel. Well, you can lean on me. This was huge. This is actually when Mitchell would occur his role in the most successful cartoon ever on the Disney Channel since Mickey Mouse. Ashley Tisdale's love interest as Jeremy in the hit show, Phineas and Ferb. Now, Mitchell was actually supposed to play Ferb, but then they decided they wanted to give Ferb a British accent. So they moved Mitchell's voice to the voice of Jeremy. Much like his Life is Rough co-star, Kyle, this would provide major job security for Mitchell in the coming years. As everyone sort of knew, Hannah Montana wasn't gonna last forever. Now, in 2009, Mitchell would embark on his own music career, truly capitalizing off of his Hannah Montana fame at its peak. Most most notably releasing the song Hey. He recorded multiple songs and videos from the self-titled project and even had a duet on it with his brother Mason. This is when Mitchell would embark on a 54-date tour with nine of the dates opening up for his very own brother Mason in his band Metro Station. And y'all, on October 3rd, 2009, Mitchell Musso would perform at Six Flags St. Louis, where an eight-year-old me would literally cry and sing my heart out. No joke, y'all, I actually did, I did see him in concert, I did. I was obsessed with Hannah Montana, I had to see him, he was iconic, if y'all remember his look in the final season too like I just remember being shocked like they gave them all makeovers now speaking of Hannah Montana forever this tour would actually conflict with the filming of the final season of Hannah Montana and this season of Hannah Montana is sort of a piece for the pop history books see Miley was gearing up for her new debut can't be tamed and had just released her Dr. Luke mixtape the time of our lives she didn't want to be with the Disney Channel anymore but they practically owned her and her name what was supposed to be a 20 six episode super season packed full of guest stars twists and turns was cut down to a measly 13 episodes that mitchell musso would only appear twice in as lily's now long distance boyfriend this is because mitchell was touring with hollywood records and was unable to film but the disney channel wasn't finished with him yet 
they had one more idea. The new decade was beginning, and the stars who had created the golden age of the Disney Channel were either growing up and onto bigger things, were aging out of their shows respectively, or the fourth season had concluded, and Disney didn't need any more episodes because of their syndication rules. Sweet Life on Deck had just ended, and Dylan and Cole were laughed out of the Disney offices when they asked for their spinoff. And Miley Cyrus was releasing the most shocking album of 2011. This left Disney with a pool of side characters who weren't big enough at the time to pull their own shows, but were familiar faces to the kids that watched the Disney Channel. During 2009, the advertising method for boys ages 6 to 11 completely changed. Suddenly, kids didn't want to just be like other kids, or older kids even. They wanted to be like adults. Nerf and other toy companies took notice of this and began chalking their shows full of young adults to appeal better to children. This called for the creation of a new pay-per-view network targeted at 6 to 11-year-olds called Disney Extreme Digital, otherwise known as Disney XD. Now, if you thought this was just the Disney Channel that had skateboarding on it, you'd be pretty much right. Like, it was pretty much the Disney Channel with Zeke and Luther. And like some really intense cartoons about dragons, I remember. Like, it was kind of the boy channel it wasn't really something I was like that interested in watching. Phineas and Ferb, the show that Mitchell Musso starred in, was ported over to Disney XD and was actually the first show to premiere. And a new live action sitcom was being prepared called Pair of Kings. Doc Shaw, the actor behind Marcus Little, the ex-rapper from The Sweet Life on Deck, was out of work due to the Sprouse twins' departure from the network. And Debbie Ryan was moving on to play Jesse in Radio Rebel. Thus, Disney XD dreamed up the concept of Pair of Kings, an outlandish story centered around around Mitchell Musso and Doc Shaw. The series centers around brothers Brody, Mitchell Musso, and Boomer, Doc Shaw, a pair of 16-year-old fraternal twins raised by their aunt and uncle in Chicago, who live in a normal existence. However, when Mason, the royal advisor to the throne of the island of King Cow, arrives at their high school, they learn that they are the heirs to the throne of the island. And after Mason tells Brody and Boomer of their lineage, they begin to realize that their lives <laughs> Sorry. I just realized, like, y'all, do you ever wonder what you're doing with your life and you're just, like, reading, like, the Pair of Kings synopsis? <laughs> anyway, after Mason tells Brody and Boomer of their lineage, they begin to realize that their lives are about to change dramatically and will try to be brave and face their fears. After making the discovery, the brothers relocate to the fictional Polynesian island of King Cow to assume their roles as joint kings of the island's nation, which has many odd customs and superstitions, which, y'all, I don't know if this would be taken offensive today. I mean, 2011 seems like the treasure trove of time where like it was the final year things kind of went unchecked like that. So I can only imagine what these quote odd customs and superstitions were. Anyway, the oldest twin was supposed to rule alone, but since all records of which twin, Brady or Boomer, is the eldest were lost, the two of them must rule together. Anyway, everything seemed to be going pretty well for Mitchell at this time, and the show had fairly normal numbers, as it was targeted towards younger kids, but then again, so was all of Disney XD. He was cast in a new spin-off show on the Disney Channel called Prank Stars, where he was actually the host and sang the theme song. Also, why was that called Prank Stars? Like, were they like, it's like Pawn Stars, but y'all, what's Pawn Stars like? Why is it called Brain Stars? Like, why was it called Brain Stars? <laughs> Mitchell was technically on four different Disney Channel shows at this time. Multiple of them were recording at once. Oh. So what happened? So Hannah Montana, so you left because you're just over it, which is understandable. Um, that was like Lilane from Liz McGuire. <laughs> I did the first episode of the last season and the last episode. First episode of the last season and, and the, the last, last episode. Because I was also shooting Pair Kings, it. shooting Phineas and Ferb, shooting Prank Stars. I was oh on God. four different TV shows Whoa. at once a week. It oh was crazy. Hard I work. Be on pl I mean, I kid you not, it was crazy. However, one fateful day in 2011 would ruin everything. On October 17th, 2011, at a quarter till 4 a.m., Mitchell would be pulled over by a police officer on suspicion of drunk driving. TMZ reporting at the time, Mitchell Musso, the Disney star who played Oliver Oaken on Hannah Montana, was arrested for drunk driving in Burbank, California yesterday. Law enforcement sources told TMZ that 20-year-old Mitchell Musso was pulled over at 3.43 a.m. on Sunday after he failed to slow down for cops who were directing traffic for an unrelated accident. 
cops approached Musso's 2007 black Mercedes Benz and detected a, quote, strong odor of alcohol. According to the rap, Mitchell's blood alcohol content was well over the legal limit of 0.8%, and he was booked at a nearby police station. Now, this wasn't just drinking and driving. This was technically underage drinking and driving as Mitchell was only 20 years old. And the police do not like that. Mitchell was quickly released after a nightmarish experience he detailed on Shane Dawson's podcast. So what, so were you bitter at the end? Were you just like, I can't? Yeah, at the age I hated everything. Yeah. I hated my parents. I hated the world. I hated it. How Enough to you? go drinking and driving, get a DUI and shit. I was just Which, up. by the way, I looked it up on Wikipedia. Like, you weren't even that drunk, right? It was like, no, not to say I that's, wasn't, whatever. Uh, I wasn't, but the cops, these guys, this, this was right in Burbank. This was at my house, and I kid you not. So I'm at this intersection on Buena Vista in Burbank, yeah. and this there's a car that hit another car, and the, the airbag's still deployed. The people are still in the car, and I'm like, oh, sh I pull the car over. I walk up. All the co cops are parked on this side. They mm. run up to me first. They're like, hey, hey, what are you doing? These people have been to my house for noise complaints a hundred times. Mm. They know who I am. And they're like, uh, what, uh, what are you doing out? What are you doing out? They're like, you, you look drunk. You do this. We need to do this. And they took breathalyzer and they did all the testing on me. And I kid you not, they arrested me. They took my car before they even helped these people out of the Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. They just wanted to screw me so Were bad. you involved oh. in the accident at all? No, I wasn't like, involved oh. in the accident. I, just, I saw it and I pulled over. They said I tried to run one of them over. <laughs> and like, it was just so ridiculous. Um, but did that, that didn't really, because I didn't hear about that until I looked you up the other day. Like, I, that didn't become a, did it become a thing? Was it like a big deal? It wasn't a huge, I mean, it, I mean, uh, it was a big deal to me. Yeah. You know, it was like my life. But was the like, public wasn't like angry. It wasn't the like public a. The public wasn't yeah. like. This kid, you know, but they were like, he needs to get some help. If anybody who gets to that's bad. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. You can't drive, you know, under the influence of anything, whether it's alcohol or weed or pills or whatever people do, you know, anything. Mm. Uh, I was 20 years old, so mm. I was underage. Uh -huh. mm, that'll get you. Zero yeah. tolerance, baby. Yeah. That'll get you. That's rough. Life yeah. is rough. They took me to jail, and I'm sitting <laughs> yeah. in this jail cell like this, and I got the blanket over me, and I turn over, and, you know, the toilet's right here. This guy's just sh Got his balls tucked. Oh. He's, like, he's like, yeah, see the camera? They're just watching me shit all over this place. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I pulled me a blanket over me. I was like, Get oh me God. back to Hannah Montana yeah. now. While Mitchell was released, he was still given 36 months of informal probation, a fine, and a mandatory stint in alcohol education classes. Telling E! News, I appreciate the court allowing me to resolve my case in the manner it did today. In becoming an adult, I have learned firsthand that stepping up and taking responsibility is the best way to move forward. I am especially thankful to my family and fans for their unwavering support and encouragement. I am glad to now put this in the past. Now, his punishment was kind of already bad enough. Being in jail and having that be publicly reported on sounds like a literal nightmare. However, Mitchell Musso's nightmare was only beginning because Disney's punishment was about to make jail look like a reward. Because of the nature of the Disney Channel and how clean the shows always are, Disney Channel a immediately pulled the plug on Mitchell's character on Pair of Kings. Instead, adding a Zeke and Luther star to replace him entirely. Yeah, yeah that's it. And the next door I the shot dentist. Pair of Kings for two years, Sunset and Gower. So wow. I just went from here to here. Also like that show. That was on Disney XD. I know a lot about that, Disney. That was, yeah. that was the coolest thing that I'd ever done. There was a terrible show on Disney XD, though, that came on right after that. I don't remember the name of it, but I was literally like, I, I felt like it was written by... I was gonna say retarded, and that's such a bad word. Was it the children with powers, superpowers? No, it was like some weird. It was like two guys, and one of them's like hoo hoo, and one of them's oh, like hoo hoo. Z Luther, Z Zeke, and oh. Luther. And I've met both those guys, and they're so nice. But that show was like what? Yeah, that kid is the <laughs> one who took my part on a pair of canes. Wait, which one? The redhead. Oh, I don't remember him. I mean, I met. I didn't I take remember. my part. Oh, the other one's a rapper now. Disney Channel also canceled the plans they had to transfer Mitchell into more mature roles in 2012. Everything was nuked because of Mitchell's DUI. The transition of Pair of Kings was not smooth nor slick either. Apparently, the new Zeke and Luther alumni's character was described as King Boz, the king who was raised by apes. Now, they canceled Prank Stars, Mitchell's original show, immediately as well. And from what I can find, Disney actually only allowed Mitchell to remain on Phineas and Ferb. As that was in voice only and didn't feature his likeness at all. Disney even had him feature on multiple Disney Junior shows after the DUI in 2016 through 18, which is also like after that Shane Dawson interview. So it just shows like Disney really does not give a f Victor Salva was just 
the start of that, they do not care. <laughs> but they were giving him ample opportunity for work, but banishing him to behind the scenes. This would be one of Mitchell's only jobs for years, as Emily Osment blew up on the Ashley Tisdale produced Young and Hungry. And Miley Cyrus went on to create the most controversial album of the 2010s. Mitchell's career would remain relatively stagnant. Now, in this lull period, I actually found a Kickstarter for a furry coated movie about giant stuffed characters that take over a town. And Mitchell just looks and acts like dead inside in this. Like, I don't think he wants to be in this. I don't really know why there's giant stuffed animals. I don't know why there's so many kids in it. It's, it's really bizarre. Take a look. Okay, so we're seeking funding for our movie, Characters. We've tried panhandling, dog walking, and babysitting. Not working. Then we heard of this Indiegogo thing and thought that might be a better idea. We're out to make a feature film and really do need your help. Characters is a quirky live action comedy about life as a costume character in a small Central Florida theme park. Starring Mitchell Musso. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Mitchell Musso and I play the role of Tucker. Now, I really want to be a theme park designer. Uh, I've been accepted into CalArts. Yes, my parents are bankrupt and I'm broke. Now, the only job that I can get is as a character in this small amusement park run by this charismatic but real sleazy general manager name. So, I get the job as Hoppy the Kangaroo. I get to meet my co-stars, including this guy who wears the pink polar bear costume. And hopefully with your donations, it it's not going to be this guy. Now, during this era of 2016 through 2017, Mitchell would appear on infamously canceled YouTuber Shane Dawson's podcast called Shane and Friends. And I remember listening to this at like 16 being appalled because Shane insinuated this really, really gross story of teen and preteen girls throwing themselves at Mitchell. And y'all, I'm just going to have to play the clip. Take a listen. The YouTuber, the only pussy that's getting thrown my way is 12. So oh. I, can't, I can't touch it. Illegal. Legally. Um, <laughs> right. Now for you, when you were you were probably like 17 so you could f touch that how was that were, were you ever like on a Disney tour and then like all this fucking young pussies thrown at you and you're like I don't know what to do and Miley's like I don't want it you take it yeah wow what was that like did they call you your character name? Were, was it weird? Were they oh, asking you yeah, questions? They, like, absolutely. What is Miley like? Like, as Say beef jerky, do Ollie <laughs> pops, and Lolly Lolliver, and do the Oliver smoking oaken, and you know, oh. I've had all that. I think the weirdest was like my friend's mother's trying to fuck me, and that oh. would be the weirdest part, you know, especially oh. the ones in, in Texas. How did that go? It was really fun. <laughs> Did you ever have sex with any of them? I had sex with a friend's mom. What? What? No, you did not. <laughs> you did? I did not. Don't quote oh, me on that. That's so not true. I got so excited for a second. <laughs> oh my god, this is my favorite interview ever. You needed okay, all the dudes. Okay, wait. Okay, so, okay, look, take me there. Take us all there. So you're at, you're at, okay, it's Radio Disney. We're all ears and pussy. And you're sitting there and you're signing autographs and everybody's coming up to you and you're jaded. You're over it. You're maybe a little stoned. You're like, get the fuck out of my way. Mm -hmm. And then like... Maybe like a barely legal girl comes up to you and she's like, her titties are wet. It's hot outside. She's sweating. She has underboob sweat dripping down. And she's like, sign my thing, smoking oaken. And then she like slips you a thing. What, like a paper that's like, let's f and then what do you do? Do you say like, oh, let me show you this over here. And then like, are you fucking like in the back? Like where there's kids, you hear screaming? Like, tell me about it. Damn, that's actually, that's a good one. Th this has happened before. Uh, I, uh, and if she doesn't slip me the note, I'll make sure to say, hey, go, get oh, that girl security. backstage, grab that girl backstage. It, the best part was when I was on stage doing music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was just, I'm so open about, like, if I want to bang this girl or if I want to hook up with this girl, whatever it is, it's going to happen. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? So, you know, I'll be in the middle of a song <laughs> and I'll be like, <laughs> you, well, you know, trying to keep the song right going. Now. Hey, I'm <laughs> screaming at you. Get this Whoa. one in the back. And, um, yeah, I mean, it just, uh, it's interesting hooking up with the fan because you don't know how they're going to look at you afterwards because yeah. you're no longer the this, this star. And this enigma. You're just freaking is, yeah. Mitchell who's got ball sweat and everything else and it's just the truth, you know, mm -hmm. like you're, you're actually just a person. But uh, it definitely got me off, whether I actually got off or just the thought of doing it to get off yeah. got mm -hmm. me off. Now quite, okay, oh, okay, take it, okay. Okay, so she's backstage. You pointed her out. You said, hey, I'm going to eat the... P she walks backstage. Security's like, Mitchell, here's your, your... You're like, okay, thank you. Great. Close the door. She's... So, how does it start? Do drops you guys, of Jupiter starts do you, playing. Drops of Jupiter. Do you, like, sit down with her and just say, like, 
you know, what's your name? Or or is it literally just like, okay, let's do this. And then that moment when it she is sees It is a let's her, do this. When she sees your penis for the first time, is there a weird, like, does she, like, laugh? Because it's like, this is, you're from Anna Montana and I'm sucking your It's It's different because with a fan, you never hear the words, I'm not going to fuck you. Yeah. You know, like with any other girl that I, like, try to go out on a date with or I'm texting for a while, the mm -hmm. first thing that they say, I'm not going to fuck you. Yeah, Respectable we're not, ladies. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to we always well not but, yet yeah <laughs> give me a lobster all, or a steak it, first yeah right <laughs> come on it, it, it's it's inevitable <laughs> but um with them it's not with them it's like this is all i want to do my p is on so platter, it's really baby. cool yeah. so you don't really have to say anything and it's just throw you on the couch yeah, yeah she yeah. just straddles on top of you she like rips her shirt off and you're just like oh my oh. god i finally know what kanye west feels like yeah. i am god yeah oh. you know and like that was more of getting off than actually whipping my dick out and yeah, yeah. getting off. And then what? So what was actually going on there? Like, I don't really know. And to be fair, if you click on any of Shane's podcasts with other people, even if it's someone you like, you're probably going to find some sh like this. Like, Shane just sits there and interrogates his guests on the most grotesque subject matter for hours at a time. And they often match his disgusting energy. Anyway, more years would pass. And rumors of a pair of Kings movies starring only Mitchell would surface around the time of Disney Plus's announcement. If that's like true, that would be insane. Like, that feels like a quibby move. And that brings us to current day. As in August of 2023, Mitchell Musso would be arrested for the second time. TMZ reported he was arrested this weekend in Texas, and according to cops, it was all that in a bag of chips. Ex-Disney star got hauled off to jail Saturday evening in Rockwall, Texas. This after officers say they responded to a call for a service at a nearby hotel, where folks were claiming Musso had been acting belligerent, and where he allegedly stole an item from the food market. <laughs> <laughs> that item, per police, a snack of the potato variety. Rockwall PD tells TMZ that when staffers demanded he pay for it, Musso allegedly became verbally abusive and walked off. Cops arrived and they found Musso outside the hotel, where they determined he was allegedly under the influence. In addition to this, Rockwall PD says they discovered a ton of outstanding traffic warrants in his name. So they cuffed him and took him into custody. Now, Musso is facing a few different charges, public intoxication, theft under $100, expired registration, failure to display a driver's license, and violating a promise to appear notice. We're told he's also being released right now on a $1,000 bond. Of course, he posed for a mugshot too while he was in there. And TMZ, y'all, they said he looks gloomy to say the least. I actually think he looks kind of cute. Um, now, the Rockwell Police Department released a statement saying police responded to a 911 call made at around 7.15 p.m. from an individual reporting a disturbance at the Spring Hill Suites Dallas Rockwall, where the caller said another individual entered the hotel and began eating a bag of chips. When the person was asked to pay for them, he became, like they said, verbally abusive and left without paying. However, Mitchell would go to People Magazine to set the record straight. He recalled the events entirely differently. After having spent four hours wave surfing on Lake Roy Hubbard near Dallas, the actor says he entered the hotel wearing only board shorts and no shirt. Mitchell telling People Magazine, quote, this disgruntled employee whose behavior was erratic ripped the bag of potato chips out of my hand and started yelling at me about my attire. Musso claimed he offered to pay for the chips, but the hotel employee said, quote, get out or I'm going to call the police. Ultimately, Mitchell said he said, sure call the cops. You know I grew up here. You know this is my hometown, right? And when the police arrived, Musso was in for a shock, saying, quote, it's scary when you're surrounded by 30 cops. 30 cops? Y'all, over a bag of chips, there should be an investigation into police resources over in Rockwall, I think. Ugh. He continued on saying, it's a scary position to be in. They brought me in. I had absolutely nothing to say to any of them because I knew what was going on. They called me by my first name. They knew exactly Exactly who I was. Because it's my hometown, people know me. And y'all, Rockwall is a very small town. Like, they literally have a Facebook page that 
that reports on everything and anyone who's there is part of that Facebook page. And if something gets reported on there, it's like instantaneously everyone in the whole town knows about it. So it's a very small town. People Magazine continued saying, the Phineas and Ferb voice actor says he was ultimately booked on charges of theft and intoxication, partly because he had two outstanding warrants from 2019 for unpaid traffic tickets. The outstanding warrants were due to a failure to display a driver's license and an expired registration, which violated a promise to appear order. Now, according to this article in People Magazine, jail was still not Mitchell's favorite place, but he did add that he finally got his hands on his favorite snack of choice, saying, quote, guess what they feed you in jail for free? Ruffles potato chips. I got my free potato chips, end quote. On the winding pipeline of DUIs and dynamics, Oliver would face his final twist, as all charges would be dropped on November 15th, as reported by People Magazine. Mitchell posting on Instagram stories at the time, quote, thank you guys for standing with me during this time. Want to thank you all for listening and being there. Sorry, couldn't talk about it. Had to wait till the truth came out. He ended the text post with a red heart and a shrug emoji. Anyway, y'all, that's about all that I have for y'all today. Do you remember Life is Rough or Hatching Pete? Comment below. And what's your favorite Hannah Montana episode? Is it the one where Oliver gets diabetes and they never talk about it again? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, this has been Secret Society. Thanks for watching. Bye.